Valley Church. Hope for those who have given up on church. Well, welcome back. It's so glad to have you with, uh, with you in, in the app group session. Um, lo really looking forward to this week. Um, we're going to look at uh, uh, Jerry's point number one in his ProVision series, Change. Um, and he talked about how passion's great until it's wrong. Um, so the question really begs is, how do we know if our passion is right or wrong? Well, I'd like us to take a look at Galatians 5, 16 to 26. Um, I've entitled this, this teaching uh, a passion check. And I want to read that whole section of Galatians 5, 16 to 26. So let's, let's do that together now. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Those two forces are con constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our, in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So let's take a look and, and do a passion checkup here. And the first thing I want to take a look at is, is in verse 16, and it says, um, the Spirit should guide you. We should be allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you, because without the Holy Spirit, we, come, we become passionate about the wrong stuff. We become passionate about stuff that benefits us. What seems right to me may be very, very wrong. Um, as a pastor, I hear all, all the time um, a, a young single person um, declaring their absolute love and, and um, devotion to a, another person. And all you see is a train wreck coming because their passion is for this person and the, they've left Jesus behind. They, they haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to um, be part of this decision-making progress. We always have to allow the Holy Spirit in. Um, and, and you do that by spending time with the Holy Spirit. Um, if you want to know how the Holy Spirit guides you, you've got to spend time with Him. And you do that by reading the Word of God, prayer, fasting, and godly counsel. Can I just tell you how important godly counsel is? You should be um, creating in your life a, a, a system or a group of godly men and women who can speak into your life and that you trust to speak truth to you and you submit to. You say, before I make huge life-changing decisions, I'm going to listen to these people, um, and, and I'm going to measure what they say against God's Word. And if they don't violate God's Word, um, I'm going to do my very best to follow that through. Now listen, there are some times when God tells us things that we have to do, um, and, and um, other people, even godly people, disagree with that. May I just help you understand that is a rare, rare occurrence. God uses people to speak to us. That's why he gives us the prophetic gift. That's why he gives us um, the, the gifts of the Spirit so that we help one another. It is rare that God asks you to step outside of that. So we want to make sure that we are being led or guided by the Holy Spirit. Second thing, um, 
to take a look at your passion, to do that passion checkup, the question you need to ask yourself, what does my passion produce? What exactly does my passion produce? Um, if it produces sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and stuff like that, you may want to take a sec second look at what you're passionate at. Now, the, the problem with that list is most of us pay attention to the beginning of the list and the end of the list, and we say we're okay. But there's some stuff in the middle of that list that we really need to pay attention to. And I want to point them out, out to you really quickly. You know, most of us can, you know, say, no, the sexual morality thing, I'm not there. Lustful pleasures, idolatry. Well, you know, idolatry looks like a lot of different things. And um, for some people, idolatry looks a whole lot like a sports jersey. Uh, ouch, I know, I just stepped on some folks and some po folks are going to be angry with me there. But come on, let's be honest. For some of us, we idolize a sports team or a sports person. Um, that's, not, that's not where our, our focus is supposed to be. We've got to be honest with this. Um, sorcery, no. What about hostility? You ever hostile? You ever hostile to somebody? Quarreling? Doesn't say fighting. It says quarreling. Jealousy? Outbursts of anger? Selfish ambition? Envy? Boy, when, when you start adding those to the, the, the beginning and the end of that list, we might need to really take a look and say, what I'm passionate about, is it causing me to have outbursts of anger? You know, think about it. Um, we see stuff going on in our world that is horrendous today. We have people murdering innocent people. And it is wrong. There's nothing about it. Um, the question is, is your passion about punishing the people doing the wrong or are you are passionate about serving the people who are being wronged? Because if you have hostility and anger towards those other people, you might want to take a second look. Because if you're passionate about it, it should be bringing about good things and and. What our passion should produce is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against that stuff. And that is what we, when we're passionate about something, it should produce those things. Not anger, not bitterness, not um, uh, uh, jealousy, selfish ambition, none of those things. That's if, if we are angry because we're passionate about something, listen to me very carefully. If we're angry about that, um, we want to check our passion. Now, look, there is righteous anger. Should we be upset that pe innocent people are being murdered all over the world? Yes. Okay. But is our, per our, is our passion about fixing the issue or about punishing for the issue? I think we really need to be careful where we go there. We should be... Um, producing um, uh, uh, stuff out of our passion that other people benefit from. And we need to be honest. I said that a little while ago. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be able to step back and be honest. And sometimes it's really hard to be honest with ourselves. And we need to bring in an outside point of view. We need somebody to speak to us. Um, I can remember um, talking to my wife one time and, and um, I was struggling with some issues and um, I said, do, do you think maybe I, I, I've got some anger issues on that? And she was like, duh, of course you have anger issues on that. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, that was, that was harsh. But I wasn't able to be honest with myself because I couldn't see it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't picture myself there. Whereas she was able to say, no, yeah, you, you, you're angry about that. And it's not a healthy place for you to be. I had gotten there so slowly, I didn't realize where I had gotten to. And sometimes with our passions, we get to places where we don't understand where the, our passion has taken us. And we need that outside objective opinion, that outside objective voice saying, hey, wait a minute, have you really thought about this? Have you really looked at it? We need to be careful where, what our passion is producing. Um, in verse 24, uh, it, it talks about nailing our passions to the cross. And I want to say all passions should be processed through the cross. 
You understand? All of our passions should be processed through the cross. If, um, if it's a wrong passion, if we've discovered it's a wrong passion, we nail it to the cross where it withers and dies. He talks here that we take our evil passions and we, we, we crucify them. We nail them to the cross. Now, listen, that is not, um, it doesn't happen in a moment. It's not like um, shooting your passion and it's dead immediately. Um, do you understand crucifixion was a long, drawn-out process? It was meant to be that way. Jesus gave up his spirit to cut his time on, on the cross short. He said, it's done, I'm finished. Um, and he gave his spirit to God. But generally, crucifixion was something that took a while. And so when we have these ungodly passions and we nail them to the cross, don't expect them to die overnight. You're going to have to wrestle with that thing. You're going to, that thing is going to reach out and try to grab you over and over and over again, and you're going to have to deny it over and over again. Um, you're going to have to leave it there to wither and die on the cross. Godly passion draws power from the cross. You know, the cross is the ultimate symbol of submission. Jesus went to the cross in submission to the Father. He said, it's part of your plan, and I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to die on that cross because, it's, because I want to submit to what your plan is. And so when we submit our passions to God, God shows up through it. He, he, um, he gives us power through that. So when we bring our passions, no matter what they are, and, and run them through the cross, the, the um, evil passions we recognize and we can put our fingers on and we can nail them to the cross, the godly passions draw power because we have submitted our passion to the cross. Listen, passion is meant to produce fruit in us for others to enjoy. Did you get that? Passion is meant to produce fruit in us for others to enjoy. You can have a godly looking passion that produces bad fruit. Think about it. The, 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 the story that Jerry told us or, or, or spoke from, read from, in Acts was about Paul's conversion. Paul was passionate about what he did. And, it, and to every um, religious Jew, to Paul himself, he had a right passion. He was, he was protecting the name of God. He was chasing out these Christians and he was persecuting Christians because they weren't following the law the way he believed it was to be followed. Very passionate about it. And it looked good, but look what it produced it produced a man that was angry and hostile and willing to argue with anybody about what he was doing. It wasn't a godly passion. Nowhere did his passion produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control. It produced anger. It produced riots. It produced stonings. Okay, it looked, he, he claimed it was for God and it looked to um, other godly people like God's favor was on him. It wasn't until that road on, to, on to, to, to Damascus that God said, why are you persecuting me? You got this all wrong. And he changed his heart and he began to follow Christ. And out of Paul's life, when you watch Paul's life, you know, um, Paul could start a riot anywhere. He was great. That's how he planted church. I love to say, you know, that was his church planting method. He'd go into a town, gather some folks around him, get a good riot going. He'd head out and he'd leave a church planted and it would grow and it would flourish. But understand that while Paul, the reaction to Paul sometimes was the same, his passion about people knowing Christ always produced good fruit. So we may, we may claim things to be, we're doing this for God or we're doing this for the good of, put in whatever you're doing it in, in the good of. The question, the test always comes back to, what does your passion produce? Is it producing 
the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In just a couple of moments, you're going you're gonna to finish this video up and you're going to sit down and you're going to discuss the, um, the questions that, that we have laid out on your handout. Um, and I want you to think about them deeply because this is where we get honest. This is where we, we look at ourselves and, and we move ahead with God. This is where we can readjust our passion to make a difference in our world. Um, and I want you to be honest with that. I want you to really take some time and begin to name some things, maybe some things that you're passionate about that you were wrong. Um, things that, that you're passionate about right now. What are, you, what are you putting your energy, what are you putting your life passion into right now? Um, what things do you, have you nailed to the cross that you're hoping to die or that you need to nail to the cross so it can die? And then lastly, I want you to be able to answer the question, who's benefiting from your passion? Are you benefiting from it? Because I got some questions if you are in that sense. Or are other people benefiting from your, passion, uh, from your passion? Are you producing that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? I hope you enjoyed this teaching. I hope you dig in deep. Um, God bless, and we'll see you next time.